One of the greatest things about video games is the freedom that they grant you over other visual media, to let the story play out however you want and to explore gorgeous, teeming worlds lovingly brought to life by a committed team of artists. But in these 10 games, exploration was less a fun exercise in discovery than it was a chore, a frustration, and even an active detriment to the central gameplay loop. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that punish you for exploring. Number 10. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Given that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order offered up eight gorgeously rendered worlds for players to visit, it was a fair assumption that the game would incentivize exploration and discovery in a major way. The gameplay is heavily Metroidvania-inspired, what with players being encouraged to revisit planets once they've acquired more force powers, in turn allowing them to reach new areas. As awesome as that sounds though, Jedi Fallen Order is a mess of contradictions, seeming to encourage players going off-piste but presenting itself in such frustrating and confusing fashion as to actually discourage it. For starters, the horrible holographic menus are a real chore to make sense of, which given the oft-labyrinth-like nature of the game's worlds makes even the most basic navigation a real headache. Then there's the game's irksome checkpoint system, whereby resting at a meditation point to restore your health will also cause every enemy in the level to also respawn, meaning that it's often impossible to quickly run to a path that you wanted to check out. The lack of a fast travel makes exploration a chore as well, as there's no way to to bypass the mundanity and just get to where you want to go without a bunch of hassle. Anyone hoping to hoover up the game's many, many collectibles is in especially dire straits, unaided by the fact that when you die, which you will often, you have to sit through some disappointingly long loading times even on newer hardware. All in all, it adds up to a game that just doesn't respect the player's time and in turn makes the prospect of exploration bafflingly unappealing. Number 9. Alien Isolation Alien Isolation was rightly praised upon release for the impressively dynamic AI programming for the Xenomorph that stalks players throughout the game. However, given how gorgeously reminiscent of the original film's ship the Nostromo the space station Sevastopol is, players couldn't be blamed for wanting to stop and smell the roses while traipsing around its halls, even with a terrifying alien creature on the loose. While the game absolutely presents itself as encouraging exploration of the station, this is in constant conflict with the game's AI design because the longer you spend walking around aimlessly, the more opportunity the AI has to fling a xenomorph attack your way. If you keep moving, it becomes tougher for the game's adaptive AI to adjust to your tactics. But if you take it slow and explore every nook and cranny, it's just a matter of time before you get waylaid by the xenomorph. Hilariously, enough players have complained about this that a mod was eventually created by a fan allowing you to freely explore the station without the threat of the xenomorph at all, which is rather genius. Number 8. Final Fantasy 2 Final Fantasy II is generally accepted to be one of the worst games in the series, and that's in large part due to a maddening gameplay loop that basically begs you to use a guide. The RPG's dungeon's design is some of the most infuriating that you'll ever encounter in the genre, with pathways seemingly encouraging exploration only for them to turn up dead ends full of nothing but utter tedium. Now, While it isn't reasonable to expect every part of every dungeon to be air quotes meaningful, Final Fantasy II takes the winding convoluted dungeon trope to the length of self-parody. Further compounding the frustration is the higher encounter rate, and the many, many trapdoors that will throw you into a room just full of tough enemies. The refinements made in the recent Pixel remaster reduce the irritation factor somewhat, but this is still some of the most listless and torturously dull dungeon design in the genre's history. Seriously, unless you are a tireless purist who has to get the job done without any outside help, use a guide or a map to navigate these dungeons, for the love of God. Number 7. Mafia while the original release of Mafia was dismissed by many as yet another Me Too Grand Theft Auto clone with a period skin job, it really wasn't that at all. This is perhaps best exemplified by the game's insistence that the player conduct themselves in an orderly fashion outside of missions, to the extent that exceeding the speed limit while driving around the city will actually soon enough get you in trouble with the cops. Hell, even running a red light will put you massively at odds with the popo, ensuring a greater sense of air quotes realism when compared to GTA, where the cops don't bat an eye until you've 
screened at least a couple of people with your car. Though Mafia's recent definitive edition included more granular options to control the cops' aggressiveness, the original game's traffic flow was so aggressively governed by speed limits that there was even an option to activate a speed limiter, ensuring that players couldn't accidentally exceed the speed limit. It's all very novel in theory and great for those who love to idly cruise, but it also made getting around Lost Heaven an absolutely sluggish chore, in turn making it far less appealing to actually soak in the city sights. Number 6. Metro Exodus the Metro franchise is first and foremost centered around survival, but considering how impressively detailed the post-apocalyptic world that you're presented with is, the desire to explore is completely undeniable. And yet, Metro Exodus in particular feels like it's primed to punish those who take detours from the main story path, largely because these subsequent encounters will often put you at a greater disadvantage moving forward. Ammo and general supplies are incredibly scarce throughout the game, and often the cost-benefit balance of exploring the wider world just simply isn't worth it. It's highly likely that you'll end up with less loot than before, so why even bother? In a game where resource management is key and a single mistake can get you killed, there's very little incentive to go anywhere that you don't need to. No matter how lovingly crafted the entire game world is, the trade-off for most players just simply isn't worth it. Number 5. Deus Ex Human Revolution in the case of Deus Ex Human Revolution, this applies to one specific part of the game, its opening level, Back in the Saddle. You're tasked with exiting Sarif Industries HQ in order to take on a tense hostage situation, but the game first allows you to explore the office's lobby area if you so wish. There's a lot for players to look at and toy around with here, but those who spend more than 15 minutes tinkering will find that in their next mission, the aforementioned hostages have died. Now, While in fairness, the game does basically say you shouldn't stick around at the HQ for too long, Long, to offer up such an interesting locale for players to explore and then immediately try to hurry them out the door is a total contradiction. Upon the game's release a decade ago, less attentive players even assumed the dead hostages were a bug, hilariously because they made more sense than IDOS presenting players with a neat area to explore while paradoxically telling them to rush to the helipad. Sure, you can return to the lobby later on in the game, but it's not like that we know that when the game starts or are acutely aware of the grave outcome our lollygagging will cause. Number 4. Skies of Arcadia Though classic Dreamcast RPG Skies of Arcadia has a fond place in many people's hearts, there's absolutely no denying that its overabundance of random encounters absolutely discourages players from exploring its beautiful open world. While the GameCube port Skies of Arcadia Legends nerfed the encounter rate, the original Dreamcast release is an absolute nightmarish avalanche of constant random battles. Given the world's inviting qualities, it's infuriating that you're so often held at arm's length from it by these battles, which are further elongated by both needlessly drawn out, unskippable animations and a lack of auto battle options. For a game supposedly to be about the joy of navigating your way through a gorgeous world, its overactive random battles absolutely contradict that. Number 3. Far Cry 4 now, this really applies to most of the more recent entries into the Far Cry franchise, but perhaps none more so than the fourth game. There are few things more immersion-breaking in open-world games than a large on-screen notification explaining that you're about to leave the combat or mission area. Far Cry 4 had some especially strict parameters for its air quotes mission zone, such that venturing even remotely off the beaten path would see your precious immersion totally shattered with an obnoxious warning message. While you may end up accidentally leaving the shockingly narrow mission zone because you stumbled across a point of interest, it's also entirely possible for the AI enemies to lead you astray. In extreme cases, you're not even able to use your sniper rifle because the required distance to operate the scope properly is outside of the damn mission zone. Obviously, it's important that open world games promote freedom, as is their entire appeal, and if a game's going to micromanage the player's movements so aggressively and outright fail them if they disobey the rules, then it probably shouldn't be an open world game at all, right? Number 2. Shadow of the Colossus Exploring Shadow of the Colossus's rich, mysterious world is an absolute joy, though players who endeavour to reach the game's secret garden will find a rather nasty surprise waiting for them. To even consider reaching the garden, you'll first need to have your stamina effectively maxed out, which requires beating the game once and then twice more on New Game Plus. On your fourth playthrough, you'll now have enough stamina to climb a wall of moss outside the central shrine, which will let you reach the secret garden. In the garden, you'll see trees bearing bountiful-looking fruit and though shooting down one and eating it will pop you the Fruit of the Garden trophy, it will also 
poison you. While fruit eaten in any other area of the game will slightly boost Wanda's maximum health, all of the fruit in the secret garden is poisonous and will decrease both your health and stamina considerably. That's uh, quite the way to de-incentivize exploration in a game with such a lush, expansive world, right? And number one, life is strange before the storm. And so our list concludes with a slightly sillier but no less punishing example from the Life is Strange prequel Before the Storm. In the game's very first episode, players are able to explore the bedroom of Chloe's mother Joyce, and upon opening one of her bedside drawers will be greeted with a decent collection of condom wrappers, some unopened, while others being torn open with clear lustful enthusiasm. Given that neither Chloe nor the player particularly wants to picture Joyce getting down to business with Chloe's stepfather David, the mere glimpse of the condoms is sure to send a nauseated shiver down every everyone's spines. On the one hand, this is what you get for snooping around your mother's bedroom. Parents are people too, after all. But on the other hand, developers Deck Nine clearly knew that they'd leave players gagging with this discovery. Lesson learned, now please pass the brain bleach. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that punish you for exploring. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my board game content and live streaming, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. There's one thing that we should never stop exploring, and that is ourselves, both mentally and physically, trying to push ourselves to become better people throughout. So I encourage you to never give up on those goals, to always seek out new challenges, challenges to help yourself grow outside and within. Big love from me to you, my friend. Now go out there and absolutely smash it today. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.